you're at home on the couch or still in your bed on the Sunday morning, wherever you happen to be, go ahead and start to get comfortable. Relax into your chair, maybe put your feet firmly on the floor in front of you and rest your hands and your arms comfortably in your lap or by your side. And I'm gonna invite you just to take a moment to scan your body and release any stress as we go into meditation today. So if you feel any stress in your neck or in your jaw or in your shoulders, just allow it to relax, release. Take a few deep breaths, and if you're comfortable, I'll invite you to close your eyes as we guide you through this meditation today. Breathing in, breathe in that source of love. Breathing out, breathe out that divine peace that is present within you. Know it in the center of your being. And take a moment to connect to that God presence, that divine spark that you know is within. God has an individualized expression in you, as you. So take a moment to connect to that. Know that source, know that inexhaustible supply that you can connect with at any time. Once upon a time, a poor vendor was selling onions in a dusty Indian bazaar. One day, an old school friend passed through the market. He was glad to bump into his old buddy and invited him for dinner at his house. The house was luxurious, and it seemed that the old friend had done very well for himself. Dinner was superb and drinks were plentiful. Before he knew it, the exhausted vendor got drunk and fell into a stupor. The host woke up early in the morning. He had business out of town and had to catch the early train. His friend was still passed out on the couch. He did not want to wake him, but he wanted to share some of his wealth with his unfortunate friend. He kindly fetched one of his priceless jewels, placed it in his friend's coat pocket, and left. Now the vendor woke up around noon. He grabbed his coat and he returned to the bazaar. He did not think to look into his pockets, and therefore he kept making a meager living by selling onions. Months passed by and then years, Poverty took a toll on the vendor's physical and mental health. Then one day, his wealthy old friend returned to the market. He was surprised to see the vendor still sitting on the ground, filthy clothes hanging from his emaciated body. Look in your pockets, he cried out immediately. The vendor found the jewel in his pocket. He realized he had been rich all along. He had all he needed, but he simply neglected to see it. He bought a small house and lived a comfortable, peaceful life. Look in your pockets. Look in your inner pocket today. That jewel, that divine spark, that Christ consciousness, that Buddha nature, whatever it is, whatever name you call that God of your knowing, that resides in the heart of you, look there today. That is the jewel, the, the light of your being, and it is with you all the time. It is with you all the time. You are rich all the time. So take just a few moments to connect with this divine presence as we enter the silence. Enter the silence.
Give yourself a few more moments here, connected to that jewel that is your being, that infinite wellspring, that source, that God substance. Just allow yourself to breathe into it for a few more moments. Breathing in love, breathing out peace. Breathing in love, breathing out peace. Know that you can return to this moment at any time. Doesn't require anything more than just focusing on the breath and the qualities of that divine spark within. As you're ready, you can begin to bring your consciousness back to your body. Just be aware of your body. If there's any residual tension in your body, you can release it now. And maybe you just start to roll your neck or your shoulders or stretch your fingers and your toes. And then when you're ready, no rush, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and return your consciousness to the room. How was that today? Sometimes we forget about that jewel inside, right? That jewel we call God. So there are many names for God, that infinite source that we call God, and there's as many names for God as there are spiritual pathways. Now, some of the names that we know God by are specific, they're personal, they're comforting to us. Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, Father, Abba, Allah, Lord, Mother, whatever name it is that you give that kind of idea of the comforting parent that guides you, right? Some of our names for God are more abstract and they convey a sense of infinite beingness and omnipresence, divine mind, principle, source, creator, the eternal spirit, universe, energy, all that is, the absolute, the ground of all being, infinite beingness, oneness, and the one I like best of all, love. Now for Charles Fillmore and other New Thought leaders and unity leaders, God is understood to be that spiritual substance or the creator of that spiritual substance that is beyond all matter, beyond all form. God is life, yet beyond life. God is energy, yet beyond all energy. God is divine mind, yet beyond our human mind's comprehension. God is divine idea and expression, yet beyond all ideas and expression. God is beyond dualistic labels and seeming paradoxes. God is one power, one presence, oneness. God is love. God is both personal and impersonal in unity's perspective. God is personal to us when we recognize that that part of God is individualized in us. It's not all of God, but part of God's in us. But that whatever we call it, divine nature, divine spark, Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, whatever name you give to it, is present in all of us. Yet God is also impersonal when we think about the vastness of all that is, that principle, law, the absolute, that power and presence that extends through all things, and it extends through all things and all no things, all the things we can see and all the things we can't see. Now, reading through Charles Fillmore's writings, I was really impressed with this one. His acceptance of scientific ideas during his own time. He wanted to kind of understand the world 
not just through a spiritual lens, but also through how science said things actually work here in the manifest realm. So he was writing about spiritual substance in 1936. Now this, for those who might not have been, had history as their strongest um, subject in school, this is just seven years after the stock market collapse and it's in the midst of the Great Depression. But Charles was still positive. He still looked to substance, to spiritual substance, over this illusion of lack and limitation all around him. And he also took in scientific revelations, such as advances in physics and subatomic particles. He saw space and the space in between the things that ether as where we would find God. It's in there, but also beyond there, behind there. So he allowed, and I really enjoyed this, he allowed his divine understanding of what God was to change as new scientific advances came about. He was not like stuck in his thinking. He allowed himself to be very flexible in his thinking. And so I can only imagine how he would be today, knowing all the new scientific advances of our time. Before I get to some of those and one ponder about how he would have reacted to those, as you know, I like to do, I want to share with you his own revelations and kind of the early unity, new thought understanding of what God is. So in the revealing word, God is defined as the almighty one, the creator, the ruler of the universe. And some of these lead to a more traditional Christian understanding of what God was at the time. But he goes beyond that, him and, and leaders of that time to say, God is infinite, eternal. God is not person, but principle. There's more to God than the human image we might have developed in our mind. It's omnipresence. It's beyond all things. He is the underlying and unchangeable truth. Now, God, um, now Charles also ascribes certain qualities to God. God is considered absolute good expressed in all creation. Next slide, Diane. The universal or God consciousness is considered unlimited in his viewpoint. And God is that from which all love springs. So I want to take a moment to think about and discuss this quality of God as infinite, particularly as it relates to this idea of spiritual substance. Now, in the chapter, this chapter of his book, Prosperity, which has been republished as part of the essential Charles Fillmore, Charles Fillmore sees divine mind as the one and only reality. Divine mind, which is another name for God, is the only reality. This goes into our first principle in unity, which we'll talk about in the coming weeks. But that's where it starts. He believed that through our connection with divine mind, through that divine spark that resides in us, we can manifest divine ideas here and now. And we do this first through the spiritual realm. So through our spiritual mind, our spiritual body, which is what he proposed we have as a kind of spiritual essence, through that we connect to divine mind and divine ideas and we bring them through to our physical mind and our physical body into manifest reality. Charles Fillmore also postulated that the spiritual wellspring is infinite. It is beyond measure and it's inexhaustible. Quote, this inexhaustible mind substance is available at all times and in all places to those who have learned to lay hold of it in consciousness. It's inexhaustible, but we have a part to play. 
We have to do something on our end. So I started thinking about this vast concept of the infinite nature of the divine, and I was left wondering what Charles would have thought about not just this idea that the universe is expanding, because that idea, that theory was present in his time, but also how since his time, science has discovered that the universe is not just expanding, it's not slowing, it's actually expanding at an accelerated rate. Would that be the infinite that Charles Fillmore thought of when he thought of God? How would he have thought in relation to our scientific understandings of matter that we have now? So there's so much more than he could have ever thought of than we could even think of. Today, scientists can only account for about 5% of the universe in terms of what we understand from matter and subatomic particles. We can only account for so much. The rest is still a mystery. Is that where that infinite wellspring showed up for Charles? Scientists theorize 68% of the universe consists of dark energy and 27% of the universe consists of dark matter. It's like the energy and the space between the things that we don't know how to measure. Is that where that infinite source shows up? I don't know. None of us really truly have those answers here in the manifest realm. But despite so many unanswered questions from science about the nature of the universe, we can, in the here and now, know the truth of spiritual substance. We can know it for ourselves, as we can do what we just did a few moments ago in meditation. We can connect to a divine mind, and we can connect to that individualized presence of God within us, right? And to do so, we also have to have faith in the process. That's one of the things that I think he picked up from the teachings of Jesus, was this idea that it's not just enough to get in tune with the divine mind, to say, I have access. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. So before our offering blessing today, we shared a quote by Charles Fillmore. It was read out. We read it almost every week. This quote reminds us that spiritual substance is infinite and it's inexhaustible. But I also want to explore this idea of the faith behind this. So the quote goes, the spiritual substance from which comes all visible wealth is never depleted. It is right with you all the time and responds to your faith in it and your demands on it. Responds to your faith in it and your demands on it. But that's just the first part of that paragraph. It goes on. It says, it is not affected by our ignorant talk of hard times, though we are affected because our thoughts and words govern our demonstration. The unfailing resource is always ready to give. It has no choice in the matter. It must give, for that is its nature. Pour your living words of faith into the omnipresent substance, and you will be prospered, though all the banks in the world close their doors. Turn the great energy of your thinking towards plenty ideas, and you will have plenty, regardless of what men about you are saying or doing. So I want to go back to this time in which Charles Fillmore lived. He lived in the time of bank collapse. He lived in the time of economic uncertainty. And he was not swayed by the lack consciousness that he saw all around him. He understood that true wealth, true spiritual substance is not limited 
to our understanding. It's beyond banks. It's beyond our understanding of economics. It's beyond our understanding of monetary exchange. Banks will come and go. Monetary systems will change. Maybe not in our lifetime, but eventually they will. There may become a time where we don't even rely on money. I know the show Star Trek kind of posits that idea, right? But you know what he did know and what he encouraged us to know is to place our faith in spiritual truth and that we have the ability, each of us, to bring forth spiritual ideas into manifestation. In essence, Charles Fillmore in this chapter is saying we simply have to live from the truth that we know, from the center of our being to manifest the goodness that is always available to us and that is never ending. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a little harder to do than it sounds. We humans, we like to get caught up in the habit energy and the lack and limitation consciousness that we see in the physical plane sometimes. Limited thinking has its root in our consciousness when we allow our minds to mistake physical manifestations for spiritual truth. How many times have you mistaken physical manifestations for spiritual truth? I'll give you some examples. You have a low account balance, so you take that as truth that you don't have any money. You have little, very little cash in your wallet, so you take that as truth that, oh, well, you know, my supply, my, my source, my substance is limited. Maybe you go to the grocery store and you see that there's been a run on eggs or milk or bread or water, as we're wont to do here in Hurricane Florida, right? Or maybe the gas lines are long or the gas stations say out of order or out of gas. And we take that for our reality. How many times have you held deep subconscious beliefs that are repeated in your thoughts and words and actions that sound like this, I don't have enough time, if only I had the energy, if only money wasn't so tight. Limited thinking does not align with spiritual truth. Limited thinking does not align with spiritual truth. Divine mind, spiritual substance, is the one and only reality, and it's unlimited, and it's inexhaustible. So I'm going to leave with this from Charles Fillmore. One of the ways that Charles Fillmore urges us to get out of this habit of limited thinking is by focusing on what we have, focusing on the good in our lives, focusing on our place within that chain of spiritual substance and within the, the law of giving and receiving. And so he wants us to do that. He urges us, encourages us to do that by blessing what we have. He says, quote, God is the source of a mighty stream of substance, and you are a tributary of that stream, a channel of expression Blessing the substance increases the flow. If your money supply is low or your purse seems empty, take it in your hands and bless it. See it filled and the living substance ready to become manifest. As you prepare your meals, bless the food with the thought of spiritual substance. When you dress, bless your garments and realize you are constantly being clothed with God's substance. Do not center your thoughts on yourself, your interest, your gains or losses, but realize the universal nature of substance. The more conscious you become of its presence, of this living substance, the more it will manifest itself for you and the richer will be the common good 
for all. Namaste. Wow. Thank you, Melissa. There's a lot to think about. A lot, to, a lot out there to learn, to know. So we'll work on that, right? Yeah. All right, we'll close our service today uh, by first making a big circle. We've got lots of people here. I wonder if we can circle the whole 